Hey guys, welcome back to the Ice Project. Big, big Pete's dog in the house for now. Roll the intro. PT, 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 what's up? What's up, man? Well, move, move the mic. Right into the mic. Perfect. Yeah, right? Yeah. How you been? Yeah, good. Just had your 10th operation. What was yeah, that like? Double figures now, so. Um, no, it's all right. Just got a plate put in my chest. Show, uh, them, show them your plate. Oh, oh sh- show yeah, them yeah, these. Show me your fucking little sussies. <laughs> <laughs> my off season titties. <laughs> Those are your in season ones, too, aren't they? <laughs> No, it's part of the dad bod. Me, oh, you, nor me. I've been there for years, mm. but I, no, I got a plate put in my chest to fix up a rib that I kept snapping. So, uh, yeah, is that sore? Yeah, sore now, but it was sore during. Like, I only done the second last game. It just wouldn't go back into place. So a little plate across it to screw it down to hold it in place. I'd be ready to go for next year. What sort of mental toll does having ten operations take on you? Um, you sort of talked about you coming in here before. You're a little bit like still a little bit dozy and all that. Yeah, it's um, oh, it's obviously tough. You know, I think you've got to be resilient. I, I'd love to not. Get injured, like it's not um, something I'm, I'm proud of. Like, I guess it's just um, what am I saying? The first few when I was at Para was all because of my own doing, like trying to shoot out of the line and whack people, and then and coming off second best. I've done my ACL doing that. I've done my shoulder, um, done my thumb. I've done heaps of things doing that. And then now that I'm a bit old, I'm 29 next week, so I've toned my game style down a lot lately, and I barely do any of that stuff. Pretty much don't do it at all, and um, just been a little bit unlucky. Like this one's. Literally like Clemmer's elbow went him off chest two weeks ago and then yeah, played the last game and then got it fixed obviously. So there's some of them you, you just can't help. I don't yeah, know how Cameron Smith doesn't like, I honestly don't know how he plays. There's plenty of hookers that play three hundred games and never really get injured. It's just I've just one of those blokes who just gets injured. But um I find a way to bounce back and I, I get back by pre season time and ready to go again. Yeah. Oh, that's all right then, eh? Yeah, I've done I've, like I said, I've had a few off season surges, but um as long as you can try and not miss games and get it fixed at the end of the year then you gotta you gotta deal with it through the off season with the kids and your partner has to clean you and wash in the shower, <laughs> dress you. It's more hard on her, I guess. But yeah, because um, when we've been together for six years in next month and I only had one surgery was with her, so then she's put up with nine. So oh really? Yeah. So she so girls, aren't huh? they? Yeah. She's, Stay away from girls. Yeah, pretty much. I reckon God said so this is the one you want. I'm gonna punish you. So, <laughs> but um, no, nah, she's she's really good. She helps me out, and like, she, she, it's probably harder for her because, like I said, she's got to dress me. Dry me like for the, especially when you're in a sling or in a brace, you can't do anything. You got to watch out for infection. Like it's just torture. You wouldn't be carrying on either, would you? Oh man, <laughs> I'm the grumpiest brick in the world. Too, I so, yeah, I'd hate it. Um, um, yeah, so yeah, exciting couple of weeks coming up. Obviously, we've got a Bucks in two two weeks. Two weeks, yeah. Long, my birthday next week, long weekend, and the Bucks, and then the wedding the weekend after. So how'd so. you propose? Uh, her dream destination is like Santorini, like where she's always wanted to go. So I was like, fuck, let's go Santorini. She's like, no, 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 it's too far. Like, blah, blah, blah. like we've got to travel, be away from the kids. Mm. Already had the ring, like, already had this plan. I was like, fucking, I was off her. So I was like, oh, where else? And you want to go, like, New York or something? She's like, yeah, sweet. And one of the guys, uh, Tyler, he works at Titans. He just left, actually, but he's an American dude. So he um, told me a few spots to, to go there and where to go for dinners and that. So he gave me, like, a big list. And oh, was he just, the, just before you, eh, remember? Yeah, yeah, you just, I was trying to, we were going to try and catch up. Yeah. The last day you were leaving. So, and then we just went to like the back of Brooklyn Bridge and, and done it there. And there was people around. And I shit myself. I was like, fuck, I am going to do this. And then there's like a little five second window where all these people that were like talking turned around. I just dropped to an A quickly and started crying. <laughs> She's like, what <laughs> Oh, really? So, no. What'd you go for? What sentence did you go for? Did you just drop a knee and go marry me? So you, you marry me, yeah. So, because it was, it was literally the coldest day ever. And um, when we're walking out, the like concierge fella, like he's an African American dude, he's like, "Hey man, it's cold outside today." And I was like, "No, no, no I'm right." Like, I was, <laughs> had the colds, like the sweats, the nervous oh. sweats, and I was just like, sh- and I had it in my um, travel bag, like you know, you, like a little bum bag thing. Mm. So I was walking around with it pinned in. I was like, "Somebody, oh, it's New York. Someone tries to, I'm chasing down the death because there's yeah, a ring in there, put a ring in there, put a money in there. I was like holding like, um, yeah, real, real careful. So it all went to plan. So it's, um, yeah, three weeks away. Exciting times, but the Bucks is going to be scary, isn't it? I'm, I'm excited, man. Like I'm, I'm nervous, but I'm excited. Like we, uh, anyone who listened to the podcast, we've got a bit of a group chat going around at the moment, and oh, there's some <laughs> loose, there's some loose characters in there. Let's just put it that way. Yeah, there's a few, um, few not uh, mentally well people, so, <laughs> including Darcy Lussick. Yeah, big Lussick down there. Culprit, but um, yeah, looking forward to getting away and go to the race with the boys and get away for four days. But I've put it the weekend before the wedding, so I'm a bit nervous because you're going to be hurting, aren't you? I could, be, I could be battling to a Thursday or Friday, so straight into cold feet. Straight, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, she's already had her hands early in the year, so I've left it to the death. But Caulfield Guineas down Melbourne, you can't complain there. It's one of the biggest race days, so I'm mm. excited. Um, so your household. I don't watch too many. I'm on Instagram all the time, purely for works like purposes. 
But yours and Jade's Instagram, I actually watch all your guys' stories. Fuck, it seems like a fun household or... It's a mental household. It yeah. is, isn't it? Yeah, I was... Um, Jade, Jade sent me the video last night. Of which one? <laughs> and he goes, oh, that, that's your... Like, you're definitely your father's son. Oh, yeah. He's yeah, fucking playing with his little willy. You know, he's a, <laughs> oh, little sickos. But, um, yeah, this is crazy, man. I, it's just, this is a funny household. Especially Leighton, he just a sponge and some of the things I say, he comes out and says, I'm like, fuck, you can't say that, you know what I mean? Like, that's on me. Yeah. So he thinks it's cool. Or I'll do something with Jade, like, mucking around, like, weird, you know, and then, like, he might see it and he'll try and do it, but mm. it's awkward because it's the son, you know, oh, no, you can't do that to mum, mate. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure, the rest oh. of them, you know, yeah. No, nah, so you just go, um, yeah, they just got to realise they're little sponges, kids, and especially the four-year-old, like, Leighton, he's, um, he's taking everything in lately, so. Yeah. Gotta watch what he says. He knows his swear words. Jeez, they're like, good-looking kids, man. Yeah, I've, I've I didn't contribute whatsoever. <laughs> when you're best looking at yeah, Parramatta, weren't you? Yeah, mum voted me 400 times. Yeah. So, beat um, Corey, did you? Yeah, beat Corey. Yeah, normally, you feel like that. But yeah, they got a good mix, you know. Like, I'm, my mum's Aboriginal. My, my dad's dad was born in Greece, like, full day go, like, yeah. Rhodes, Greece. And then Jade's obviously half Mouldy, half Aboriginal. So these kids have got this weird mix, and they've got the dimples in there as well. Yeah, the dimples just, help, man, don't yeah, they? And they're tanned. Yeah, they don't know what they are. They're little fruit salads like me, so. Jeez, you would be guarding the windows, wouldn't you? Oh, no, you'd oh, no, you be sweet, wouldn't you? would be sweet. Boys. Oh, you're jumping in. What's happening? So, <laughs> yeah, so. All right, let's get the little footy stuff out the way. Yeah. Leaving Parramatta, what was that like? You guys, you guys had a really close crew there, eh? Because I used yeah. to come and jump on you on your piss ups and that as well. Yeah, and yeah, so like the first year was when I was with Jade, and I was like in that um in the Bronx. No, no, like the first year, so end of thirteen and the fourteen that preseason, I was like, you know, when you first with a girl and you're like, you just like loved up, and I was like, literally doing training, doing weights, and then flying straight home. Like I yeah. wouldn't hang out with anyone, wouldn't do anything, just like. Just go straight home. Like I was one of those. I was just just one of those loved up young ones. Yeah. Know? And then I come out of my shell after. So like Guffo, pretty much like Guffo's Guffo. got a bit of that in him. <laughs> he's, he's lame. He's, he's straight back to manly. Straight. I don't blame him, but but um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I saw that. I took a while for me to unwind because I was obviously a South boy through and through through the juniors. That so I knew everyone and got there and didn't really know anyone. And then um, yeah. Then after I sort of um, like got the boys got to know who I was. You know what I mean? I sort of relaxed a bit and moved closer to Leichhardt because I used to live in Rosebud, like right here. So yeah. driving on Parramatta, like. 50 an hour every hour I'm just road rage like then I moved the like and then Paramount eventually so once I got closer and closer I got closer and closer with all the boys so when when I left it was obviously like yeah, yeah you were close like, when yeah, you yeah it was heartbreaking because the week before like not many people know like the week before they come in and said oh, so me and Gutho were in city camp mm. and Freddie's like oh they said to us oh boys you um got to be at the club tomorrow morning it's like sweet and we told Freddie and Freddie's like yeah you're sweet as you know so then we went to the club and then Todd Greenberg came in and was like, boys, you've lost all your points. And like, I started crying because we were like, I think we were like on 14 points or 12 points on time out of the first eight rounds. Like, we were flying six out of eight, like, we were going good. I know how hard we all trained. And I was like devastated. I was like, fuck. So we went back to city camp, played that Sunday, got a message on the Monday night from a manager saying, mate, they've asked you to leave. I was like, fuck. So it was the biggest like whirlwind week. And then I went to train on Tuesday, prepared as if I was playing. And then by the Thursday night, I'd agreed to that I'd leave, you know what I mean? Mm. So it was crazy. And I was still living in the Bronx, so I was like, that's when they played South on the Friday night, and I could hear the crowd. Refuse, oh, really? I refused to go watch the game. Like Surely just, go get some sushi or something. Yeah, I was stubborn, I was get some Kenzo or something. But um, <laughs> yeah, like that's the power of fan, uh, fans, that's when they've done that stand ovation for a minute, like the ninth minute. Like, like they're, the, they're the best fans, like they're so loyal, and they, they put up through heaps. So I still. Um, if they if they win, a, if, if Paramount get it right and win a comp, like. Yeah, it could be. It's game over, yeah, right? Yeah, it's yeah, game they'll over. just dominate, because like, you know. Uh, AFL is trying to compete, but they've got no fans. <laughs> they're in the grand final, they had 15 blokes there, honestly. Like, yeah, that's like, well sad, done isn't to it? them. Like, yeah. they're, they're a great side, but I think trying to, like, I just don't think AFL is going to work out there. It's never going to beat. You know, you've got Bulldogs, Tigers, Para, Penrith. Like, there's too many teams out there. Um, Brad, Offer, Brad Arthur copped a bit of stick last year. Obviously, the boys come wooden spoon. You've been under him. I know anyone that's played under him, no one's ever bagged him that's no. played under him. What's your thoughts on Brad Arthur? No, I love Brad Arthur. Yeah, it hurt. It hurt me when I left, like, because I sort of blamed him a bit, even though he was the coach and he didn't have a lot of power. Like, you know what I mean? I just well, it was a bit, uh, probably just disappointed in the whole situation. So I was off him as well. But mm. it took me a year or two to get over, like, not a year or two, maybe like a year just to realise, like, the situation where it was way above his pay, you know, like, it was, it was from the top down. And um, then after I haven't really spoke to him since. Like, we've, we've, I've seen him once or twice, but. Um, yeah, we're, we're, he's, he's probably like yeah, my favourite coach that I've had because he's, he's just um, we got along really well. You know, I mean, I've, had some, I've had some good coaches, Johnny Lang and Neil Henry. Like, so I've had some really strong um, coaches. But um, yeah, we just had a real good connection there. What makes him so good? He just gets he just gets an, he knows you. He's, he's like I don't know Wayne Bennett well, but I heard he's a good um, people manager. Like he knows individual strengths, weaknesses. Um, 
what he can get out of you, what you need to work on, and that's the kind of coach he is. He knows, he figures you out as a person, finds out who you are, and then um, he he'll, he'll give you confidence and you need it, or he'll he'll say you got to work on this, and he like individualizes. Not just, sometimes coaches just treat thirty blokes as thirty players, mm. but everyone's in, everyone's got different buttons to push. You can you can abuse one player and he'll lift, and you can do it somewhere else again or shell. You got to individually know people, know their families, know their backgrounds. I think that's what he only took time to know people. Yeah. We talked about this the other day, uh, me and Oz, but we're saying like more so they're like the Islander boys. You can't really like spray them anymore, or not anymore. But you can't really spray them because they don't really take to it too well. You yeah. know what I mean? They go in their shell. Yeah, there's a lot that's mean. You got to figure out, you know, like I said, cultural background, like who they are, what they're like as individuals, like upbringing, upbringing. You don't know what they've been through. They might have got any white black. They might have got abusers, kids. They don't like the someone in te- or a male figure have well, some players don't have father figures in their life. Someone's a male bloke. You, like, they just don't like it. Like mm. you just got. I'm not saying you have to baby everyone, but Good coaches take out time to know their players, and when they figure them out and know what what, what makes them what makes them hungry or what you know they can work on and how they can speak to them, I think that's what gets the best out of players. And that was something that he done. Mm. So you duck off to the Titans. What's that like? What's it? You've been here for a couple of years now. It's not, I just finished my fourth year. Yeah. So you just finished? Oh, really? That long? Yeah. Oh, shit, yeah. that's quick, yeah, eh? That's crazy. So you went up there. Obviously, boys started rolling to the finals and thought you're onto a good thing. And yeah, it's the first two years were really good. It went straight to. Titans, we made the finals and, and Power, that's when they lost their points. So I was like, well, shit, you know, I'm fucking playing finals, baby. Yeah. And like, we're up to, I remember we up 12 0 against Broncos at Suncourt. So fuck, and then we ended up getting beat. So, like, but. It was a good up, game, I remember yeah, that. Yeah, it ended up being a doozy, like, sort of year for myself. I was like, fuck, this is not bad. And then a the year later, trained my ass off in preseason. That's when I popped my shoulder in the trial. So I missed the first six rounds, but come back and then made Origin, like, played really well again. We didn't go as good as a side, but um, sort of achieved the lifelong dream. And then, sort of, 18, 19 has just been. Really disappointing as an individual on an individual front and as a team's front. We're just this year is probably the first year in my career I've never take I haven't taken anything out of it. I didn't take there's not one positive I could actually say like really like I honestly didn't improve as individual. I, I, my performances weren't near scratch. The team's performances were dreadful. We had numerous injuries. Like the one shining light for as a, from a Titans perspective, I think would be the you know, Mo for the Waker. Like he's, he's just good, a, eh? He's yeah. Nine-year-old kid, yeah. He's the most humble bloke. He reminds me of Manu when I first played Manu Mo at Parallax. Like, does, obviously doesn't have his history, but um, <laughs> you know, but like just um, works hard, stays quiet, puts his head down, and just fucking focuses and and, and just grinds for the team. That's, and he's but he's nineteen, mm. so that's probably the only shine I could see. But as a team, we're, we're awful. I'm a fan of AJ Brimson. Hey, he's good, eh? Yeah, AJ's good. A kid, yeah. He's um, yeah. how old's he now? I think he's twenty one. I think him and Phil Sammy. Yeah, same age. So there's some there's some really good young talent there. Um, yeah, AJ probably. Like he's, he's for his stand, he probably didn't have that as great a year as he'd like it, but he still played really well. You know, mm. what I mean? it's just when you come last, there's not a lot to take you out of it. And then you, when you're not rolling forward, it's hard for the halves and hookers to play off the back of that. And then we had, you know, we had all these injuries. We had one front row to choose from the last few games, so it was just like just one of those years that just dragged on. It was just disappointing. I uh, got a friend and I've been coached by him. I actually liked him, really, really liked him. Um, it's obviously different coaching from reserve grade to first grade. What was your thoughts on them? Um, yeah, it obviously didn't work out as well as he as liked. I think. It is a big jump from reserve grade to first grade, and even assistant coach to head coach, isn't it? There's a massive change. Isn't yeah, it? I think you know, I think that some of the coaches that have done that, like um, have gone to England first, it it, it works. I mean, Michael McGuire, Trent Robinson, they've gone there because even though you've been a good assistant by going there and running a team and knowing you know how you got to work with the CEO, the salary cap, you know, making shots, calls, um, it's a big. Then then you come here and you can actually make it work. I think assistant coach they got. They get a lot of put pressure put on them, but they're most of the time they're the best blokes in the world because mm. the pressure's not exactly on them. Like I've yeah. always had great assistant coaches. I've always had. I don't think I've ever had a bad assistant nah, coach. I've always had the funniest blokes. And they're really <laughs> hard work. They do video a lot and they study and they do all their stuff. But they do two drills a week and just laughing out yeah, the back. Yeah, they, they just like they want. They're one of the boys. You know what I mean. Mm. So, um, so obviously you're a bit of a social media presence on Twitter. You're taking a bit of a break away from that lately. Why? Yeah, I just I knew when Garth got flicked that um. They were going to start attacking the players and then I was like, fuck, I'm sick of these keyboard warriors. Like, you put one thing on there and they just start attacking you. And now I had blokes like, that was funny. I've, we played the Warriors this year and it was 14-12 or something. People was like, so I, shot, I seen Blake, I, was, I didn't know I was four men, I saw, which for people who don't know, that's your back row. So normally I thought I had yeah, someone else outside, yeah, yeah. outside me. So I've, I've come from inside out, pressure on Blake Green, put kick pressure on. And I didn't see that I didn't have a five man because no one. I just I thought I was a middle, you know. So I've come out and he's gone around me and I've just missed. And he's played back in the inside and two of us checks scored. And I was like, fuck. And people were like, I can't believe Pete's running out to make that tackle. It wasn't a tackle. I was doing kick pressure, but he just got around. And then mm. the rest of our defensive line. So it was my fault. But the rest of the defensive line didn't come up. And then no one shut the gate in the inside. Yeah. So anyway, I went on my phone and explained some bloke from P and G's like you should resign. And that just like into me. I, I laughed for that one because like he sprayed me from P and G. Like, <laughs> might have been might have been Chico. <laughs> 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 
fake account. <laughs> false, false account. But, um, yeah. but then, yeah, on Twitter, and it wasn't because but then when Garth got sacked, I knew they're just going to start attacking players. Like, and uh, I was just sick of it because, you know, at the end of the day... You kind like, of embrace... You've always sort of embraced that type of um, connection between the fans, even though I know a lot of people hold behind troll accounts. Yeah, I don't, I don't mind it. Like, I, I don't mind having a laugh. But, like, just... Um, I just knew... To clear my head, I thought it'd be. I think I went on once or twice to put up like a thing for Jade's um, clothing thing, yeah. just, like, just quickly because she asked me to. And I was like, "Yeah, bang!" Then I signed straight out. I deleted the app actually, and it was actually I found it was probably the clearest minded I've been the last six weeks. Like, because and I realized when I'm at home with the kids, I'm playing with them, not on my phone. Like, mm. I deleted Facebook, even though nothing's on Facebook. I have you know, friends in there. It's just more the videos you laugh at and that. Yeah, but it's a good time, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it's something like new YouTube. You, know, <laughs> you still watch one video, a bloke getting run over, and you're 40 minutes into play, watching a poker <laughs> tournament. You know what I mean? So. But yeah, I just thought I'd clear my mind and, and get off it, and then I'm back on it now. But even the other day, like I was on something, someone just came out. I was like, "Mate, it's 2019. Like, pull, or not, you know, pull your head in, like you're right. Anything, and then you're always gonna like, you're always gonna um, like, upset someone." Yeah. So I said, my one the other day, I was like, "Oh, I got an Uber Eats," and I was fucking watching this thing come from 4K away. I said, "What's it fucking doing?" His name was <laughs> Ricardo, right? I, mean, yeah, I saw that. And tweet, then he fucking yeah. gets in a push bike. Four. He's like chunky fella. He's sweating, and me food's, food's cold. cold. So I'm like, "Fuck me." First tweet back, you know. I changed his name. His name might have been Fernandez. He was like a like a Brazilian fella. Mm. And I put um thing and then some bloke's like, How dare you write him his name and, and have a go at a bloke making fifteen dollars an hour when you make ten grand a week? He said, Oh, ten grand a week sounds nice. Who's that? And he's like, You know what I mean? I said, mate, pull your fucking head in. Like I was literally joking around, I didn't even use his real name, just being a bit and then they're like, Oh, I'm no, I just expect you to be but I said, like, honestly, shut up. Like <laughs> it's just a joke on Twitter. Like that's you just I'm just why I'm just sick of people these days how they are. Everyone's just so uptight and can't even have a laugh in. We can't even write anything anymore. Like just, like it just does my head. So that's why I just get off it every now and then because I'm just like, honestly, can't take anyone. What's the, What's the worst thing you've ever got tweeted? Nah, nothing on Twitter. People just spray about how shit you on that. But it's like, I just go oh, enjoy work Monday while I'm doing weights. Yeah. Why do you, Why do you think there's a massive disconnection between fans and players at the moment? Well, they they, from my opinion, is it's an honest opinion. Fans. Or players get betrayed from certain certain players get betrayed by the media, and then the fans they're like the the media's like the middleman kind of thing. Mm. So then the, the fans read or see what they've been told. Like I'm not exactly sure what the Ryan Madison case is. Like I'm not I'm not I have no idea about it, but I'm hearing that he's leaving for money. But when Buzz Rothfield and that are writing that, like honestly, it's dead set probably twenty percent true. That story might be true still, but I'm mm. saying they come up with these th- theories that they or they their stories they've ranked someone who's a board member and they get a little bit of insight and they write it and all the fans are like, he's a dog, blah 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 but it's not even anywhere near the truth. Like, yeah. and I'm not saying Ryan Madison, I'm just using that as an example. But something like the media come out and say these things and then the fans go, Yeah, they all just jump on board. And I'm just like half it's ninety percent of the time it's not even true. Like, yeah. Fair enough if there's if a player's been a dickhead and I've been guilty of that myself, then you have your you're entitled to your opinion. But it just it just sometimes they the ones that pissed me off, I done that my voice thing the other week, players' voice. So, and like when people like that was a good article. Eh? I enjoyed oh, actually, that. Yeah, yeah. I, th- I thought it come across really well. But when people like start writing my missus' Instagram photos and my family like writing shit about me, like that's too funny. You're going there always on private. Like I wish I knew someone like like as like a cyber hacker just go just <laughs> finally just knock on their door and go, hey, it's me. Yeah, hundred percent. So, but it's it's just yeah. that that's that's where the line's got to be. Surely, you yeah, know what I mean. Like you're you're a professional athlete, you get paid good money, you understand your responsibility yeah. as a rugby league player. Yeah. But once family and that shit, fuck that yeah, pisses I, me I, off. I used to read the comments that years ago, but now I don't, I'm, don't even bother. Like it's you're never gonna <laughs> you're never gonna find like Twitter now I do because it's like interaction more. But like I mean like you're never gonna find everyone positive. Like if you say you put a photo up and there's a hundred photo, hundred comments, like 40 or 30 of them are going to be like negative or someone spraying. Like it's just yeah. how it is. Like, it's not even worth writing back. I just laugh these days. Yeah, we like even us, like YKTR, me personally, like our media company, like I'll, I'll probably get like a hater message probably like once every day. We're like, yeah. oh, you, like your clothes are shit. Like you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Yeah. Hate your podcast. Yeah. <laughs> like, what, are you, what are you listening to? I yeah. don't get it. Yeah. yeah. I just And everyone's entitled to their opinion. Like you got to remember everyone is entitled to it, but the, the Why voice it? If yeah, it's, that's what the oh. thing I explained. The player's voice was right. I was like, if I watch a Hugh Jackman movie, I'm not going to go on, and I didn't like it. I'm not going to go on his Instagram and go, "Hey, mate, your movie is fucking dog shit." Blah blah blah. Your shit. Blah, blah. What do you get out of that? Like, actually, like, I wouldn't even waste my breath. I'd just be like, "Fuck, his movie was custard." Yeah. But play, they find they have it, they, and sometimes they sit there and they laugh, they're probably giggling with their mates and they get the players biting back sometimes. But do you know what argument I don't like from fans? And it's kind of the one like, oh, like these guys are paid X amount, and I'm. I'm working this job Only getting paid this Like they should be Like Surely that's your own fault You know what I yeah, mean Yeah I think people Think that footy is easy Like I'm, I'm One of those You know Top 1% Or whatever it is The stats on it That gets to do something That they absolutely love They've been playing Since they've been a kid And and, and dream of every day When they were a kid Playing And I get to do that But 
I got that through hard work. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not one of those six foot nine basketballers that are built like a brick shit house and just naturally freaks. Like I'm, I've worked hard to get to where I am. So when people say it to me, I mate, don't fucking disrespect me because I've, I, I'm deserved to be here. I've worked my ass off to get here, and don't, don't be hating on me because I've, I play footy for a living. Like fuck, who cares? Like if you want to be a, a garbo or, or cleaner, that's that's fine as long as you provide for your family. I'm happy, but. Don't have a go at me because I do this for a living and get paid this. Is it worse in Australia than anywhere else, you reckon? What did that guy get paid from the NFL contracts? Like, what's my home's going to get paid? 210 million? 210. 50, 60 guaranteed or something, would it be? No, with him it would be different. He'll get guaranteed. Guaranteed, yeah. So 210 million. So we've got one player getting that. And like, fuck, it's crazy. We you know I found out yesterday, I was talking to a dude and he said that. Texas, they don't have income income tax. Yeah, yeah. So if you're yeah. the Houston Rockets and you're on two hundred twenty million, you're on two hundred twenty million. Whereas yeah. like LeBron, he's getting taxed forty six percent, like we are, like over here. I think Kevin Durant because he went to um, college down there, so he's lived there for a year, so he can buy residence down there and send his mail there and gets gets yeah, what he gets. Yes, I mean, so, which um, Gold Coast. So someone who's been around the game for a long time and a straight shooter, where are the issues in the game for you? Let's go from like from being a player first. Um, it's a good question. Hey, let me ask you a question. Yeah, maybe you toss some up. What, what's, what's your thoughts on like sort of players leaving contracts mid contract? I don't, I don't have a problem with it. Like clubs can flick players mid contract, <laughs> so who gives a shit? Like, that, that's my exact argument. I've been there. I've been there. He gives it like if, if uh, fuck it is what it is, man. A player, will, a club will tap you on the shoulder and say, yeah, you might get paid out like a, half your contract. If say I got tapped in the shoulder and then Penrith said, yeah, we'll take you. You know, say you're on it. 100,000 make it even, right? Mm. Times will probably go, yeah, he's 50, and then Penrith make up 50. So you get paid still, but you, you've got to ship your family. You've got to move to a place you don't want to go. So when a player is like, has has personal reasons or needs a leave, both go to the Super League. Every year, 10 Aussies will go to the Super League and, and leave after a year because they don't like living there. That's mm. just how it is. But I'm not saying players can just get up and leave whenever they want and get what they want. I'm not a fan. I don't agree with that. Mm. But if a player has to leave for, for a reason or something that he's not agreeing with or something's not working there, and if, as long as both... Uh, team, both parties um, get what they need out of it, and I think it's fine. Like, it is what it is. Do you know what I? Was, I got into an argument with a guy on Twitter one time, and um, he goes, "Oh, you shouldn't be able to leave a co- leave a contract." And I was like, "Oh, do you have any friends that are divorced?" And he goes, "Yeah." And I was like, "Do you bag them for getting divorced?" He goes, "Oh, no, nah, because it was like it didn't work out." <laughs> I'm exactly. like, "That's a fucking contract." Yeah, exactly. So. You, you're at the altar and go till death do us part. Yeah. And if you don't want to fucking stay in your marriage, you get a divorce. You're yeah. breaking a contract. I don't see people hanging around divorcees and <laughs> doing all that sort of shit. You know what I mean? Except, yeah. So when you leave, you get paid. Where the like, your missus will take fifty <laughs> percent. <off you. laughs> same shit, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Right, same. But oh yeah, like I said, I'll go back to my point. Like I'm not, I'm not back in that place and just go. I'm not training anymore. I'm leaving, and, and that happens all the time. I'm just saying. What about more Ryan Madison's one where it's? I'm not sure. That's what I was touching before. I'm not exactly sure. I'm not going to comment on that when I don't know exactly. I'm reading that he's not happy. Mm. He's not happy with the money he's on. That seems very arrogant. But he might be that person. I'm not sure. But I'm you know reading, him, don't you? Oh, I know him a little bit, but I don't know him well enough to to, to judge on that. So yeah, like, well, I don't understand. But then I read things that he's not getting along with the coach and that. So, but the, they reported, oh, he's leaving because he's money. Like, so you, every every all the fans are like, oh, fucking right, Madison is right, man. But you don't actually know the full story. He might yeah. be falling out with Madge. He might they might want him to play middle next year. He's a right back rower. You know, what I mean, he might think, well, fuck, I can get an extra hundred fifty thousand from this club, and and I can play the position I want, and I get along with the coach. Like, mm. let's go. All right. So, what's your issue with media at the moment? Sort of same along the same lines. Yeah, I'm not. A You've had a few run-ins with them in the yeah, past, haven't you? I'm not, I've got a list on my phone of people I won't refuse to talk to. Yep. and I just don't. Uh, uh, Buzz Rothfield, I can't stand him. Um, he's just they're just I just find that they're they're just some. There's a lot of great media. There are a lot of great journals that do great things for the NRL, and they're, and they're, they're great for players. But there's a lot of play, people out there just literally making their money by just writing shit about players and bagging the game. There's no accountability to them either, is there? Because I see a lot of, like, I know some of them put their names through the articles, but a lot of them don't as well. And if the story's fucking not true, so the one that pissed me off back in the day was a Steve Maddow one when they said he was fixing games. And it was a massive thing in the paper. And then when it was it found out it wasn't true, they got this little... Yeah, little 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 snippet. You know what I mean? Like, there's a bloke who, I can't remember his name, he was um, worked up in gold, he does all the media up there, like one of the journos, and... I go to the cafe on a Wednesday on a day off with the kids and the missus and I'm not a big fan of reading the paper. You flip open the Gold Coast Bulletin and there'll be a shit story about you. I'm like, oh. Then you get the train. He's like, hey, PT. I'm like, fuck, don't talk to me, man. I'm not you. <laughs> so I've done the Darius Boyd to him. Just went, oh, yeah. No, he's like, why? And I said, well, you want to write shit, mm. which is fine. That's your job. But then don't come in and expect to be your mate and say, hey, PT, like, I'm not going to be your mate. Like, if I wrote shit about you or when Instagram started attacking you, I wouldn't walk past and go, hey, Jimmy, you know, I'll just like, see you, mate. I don't like you. So same mm. as Buzz, Buzz Ruffield, like, he. 
bagged me that many times on NR360, right shit about me all the time. Then I went to Chocks fight and um, we're in the sheds and he can't shake my hand. I said, no fucking shake your I'm not shaking your hand, you old fossil. Mm. He's like, what do you mean? I said, because you write shit about me, talk shit about me all the time and then you want to come in and shake my hand. I oh, this is my job, I mate. don't like you, you don't like me, but yeah. don't try and be me, mate. Just go, oh, fuck those pizza. Yeah. And I'll be fine with that Because I know you don't like me Because you write shit about me mm. Then he had the hide to call the coach And call someone from the club And then went on 360 to defend himself Mate, you write shit about me all the time And so once a player has a go back at you You want to ring the club and that Just cop on the chin, mate I don't like you, you don't like me Leave it at that You don't have to go ring people To try and get me in trouble From a outside, from another angle That happens a lot too Like, because like, oh, I've obviously been out with the boys a lot And they go like Oh, we'll, we'll ring the club and tell you oh, Fucking go like, Yeah, it's like <laughs> And, and heaps, of, heaps of coaches have certain relationships with journos and the club CEOs and that too. So certain journos will get a lot of inside or they'll be close to a manager. Yeah. So like I've, I've, heard, oh, I've, I've heard stories from, not stories, but I know certain managers and, and who are close to certain journos and all of a sudden the story gets put out and you're like, I know for a fact it was that guy's journal or whatever. Yeah, see, well, do you know what? Fans don't realise that stuff. And even like um, say if you're administration and say I'm an administrator of my club and I want to get rid of Nathan Peets but he's on two, three years, what's the best way to get him get him out is to get the public on your side. So what you do is leak a story about Nathan Peets. Mm. Hey, don't come to training today. And you usually say the same stuff like mental issues, drinking problem, um, like got the weight of the change room So they use the media outlets And because journos just love a negative story They're going to latch on to these yeah, They don't yeah, give a fuck yeah. if it's true or not yeah. And then you got all the fans going Shit Nathan Shit Nathan Pete's might be a problem yeah, 100%. Let, Let's get rid of him Yeah and then And, and people don't realise that Player managers do this And administrators do it And yeah They're all connected Like a uh, a manager will have a close relationship with CEO from five clubs, mm. and a lot of their players will be at those clubs. You know what I mean? So then they'll go. That's happened at the Broncos, hasn't it? Yeah. Well, there's one manager there has like eighteen blokes or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> They're all linked to each other, so you don't know. You might be thinking like, you might go use me and Sammy you for example, like just for example. You might go, oh, "Is a piece of Tigers want you really bad, blah blah. It's a mad deal, blah blah." But you don't know like what's going on behind closed. Or he might have got another player of his to the Titans in your position or something. So you yeah. think, fuck, this is a good deal. But then he's, <laughs> you just don't know. You, you just got to trust him and back him. And, and we have a really close relationship, me and Sam, so mm. I'm confident with, with him. But, um, yeah, other players, I definitely don't feel that. Feel I think um, well, someone someone missed me the other day and they're like, oh, you should get Sam Mayu on, my pod, on your podcast. I was like, nah, bro, I'm sweet, man. <laughs> 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 I've been knocking around with them player managers. <laughs> no, he's, uh, he's a good man for me. So he's, um, But, yeah, I know what you're saying. Like, And then – like, and like I said, back on the media thing, there's so many good media guys out there. Like, so Who's a good, give give someone a rap. Who do you do you like any of? Um, there's a bloke up in Brizzy. I've just lost his name on my tongue. Um, Mark Mark Gordon. Uh, and he's good, huh? Yeah, well, I want to know his name now, so I can don't. He's always good. What's his name? I'm gonna be good looking up. Because oh, trust Google. What's the time on? Twenty seven. Oh, is that it? My Google app's not working. Mark Godinay, his name is. Yeah. Ball fella up there, Brizzy. He just uh, he comes up to, with Fox Sports, like with the camera himself, wears his suit, jacket, but he's got boardies on. Mm. And he does the interview, and then he'll send it to Fox Sports, and they'll play it in the Arvo. Mm. He's always cool with me. Yeah, he's nice. There's heaps of, been, heaps of nice guys, like Larry Pitt. No, like they're all nice back in the day to me when I was at Para. Because the difference of Goldie is South and Para. You're there, you're getting on media day, you're getting like 15, 20 cameras yeah, there. True. Gold Coast is the same crew, but you just rock up and like, hey, Johnny, hey, Sam, like <laughs> the same four people, like, and they're cool as, you know. So, um, do you think sporting clubs can survive on the Gold Coast? I definitely do. It just, it's, it's something I spoke to this guy about yesterday, and it's something I've, you know, spoke to with some at the club. And uh, it comes down, so Titans are really big on. Um, is it too nice there? Like, it's. Well, yeah, this is this what I'm getting to. Like, so it's, uh, it's the best place to live there, and, and but. One thing I'll get, I'll touch on that one. So, the one thing I said was that the Titans are really big on doing stuff for the community and getting at the clubs and the, and they are probably the best in the area of doing it. They go like above and beyond for the community. They do everything for kids, like Aboriginal programs. Like they're, they're so good, right? Mm. And they and I, I have a feeling they do that to get fans to the door, which does work with the kids because kids do remember that. But my, th- I'm. 100% percent buy is that if you're a top four side, you're getting fans through the door. Mm. That and time slots. You know I mean, so if we're a top four side and we're playing anyone on a, on a Friday night or a Sunday Arvo, you're getting 22,000 at 100% in that stadium. But when you're not travelling well and you're playing at Saturday 3 o'clock, it, let's be honest, who's going to – if you're on the Gold Coast, middle of summer, it's 25 degrees and the Titans aren't going real well, and that's when the junior footies on Saturdays too, you're going to – got jet skiing, fishing, surfing, like on the beers. Like you got that, that many options up there, you know what I mean? So they're not going to come watch us play. Yeah. If we're a top four side, you're going to get um, blokes through the door. And then, then going back on your thing is the Gold Coast is too nice. I don't think in the past – and I'm an outsider coming in, but I've been there for four years and you learn to love it, but 
I don't know if there's a lot uh, if everyone is like passionate about the club. Like you know when you because they they kind of have to pay overs to get the boys up there. Or? Well, a lot of blokes who are there, like they're starting to get a lot of Gold Coast juniors who are pa- like you know blokes like Ryan James and mm. like yeah, all these blokes like Anthony Dine like. Um, so they got they got really good school systems and juniors yeah, like up there. Phil, Phil yeah. Sammy, Moe, they're all they're all juniors from t- Titans. You know I mean, Brumo, like they're all juniors and they're coming through the ranks and they they you know, Jai Witty, Jai Arrow, like there's all these all these kids that are here and all these young. <laughs> all these blokes there that love the club, but there's a few other blokes that I don't know if they do as love it as much. I mean, that's the thing that people can get with the Gold Coast is players have come up here before and just got their money and left. You know what I mean? And mm. um, people could probably say that about me. You know I mean, but I know I've, I've worked hard there and and. I earned my deal, but I've but I, you loved. I love loved the place. We're retiring there. Like we've already made that decision. Like, come, oh really? Yeah. Yeah. I've come down here today, and like I love Sydney. I'm from Sydney. I'm a Sydney boy, but just it's fucking people everywhere, and it's just it's just chaos. I'm just like get me back home. Like I stayed in here for a week. I'm like get me the fuck out of here. Like so, mm. I've learned to love it. So touch wood, I, I get another deal. Then I earned my deal this last year. But regardless of whatever happens, and I think we're going to retire there. We've made that decision like two years ago because yep. you learn to love the place and the community and that. But a, a, answer your question A team can definitely work it Just We just need to get that side Back together where we can mm. And if it does work I, it, it could blow the Gold Coast out Because I'm being honest The Suns They're not going to do anything up there Like They've had like 50 million dollars Put in from the NFL Really? AFL They get top one uh, Top draft picks put Like for the new clubs And that like mm. GWS have taken off with it You know what I mean They've got their draft picks And they're kicking goals They're massive You know what I mean But I just don't know that Suns If we're going to win If it's going to be our us two We're going to win Like we just need to so rugby league hardening because people think it's just purely the Gold Coast. We're, we're linked from Coffs Harbour all the way up. So mm. like, you got talking about Graft and Tweed, um, Ballina, Byron Bay. Like that's all our juniors down there too. There's so many young kids coming through that are just absolute freaks. But if they lose the Gold Coast team, all those juniors, who are they going to go to? They're going to have to go down to Newcastle or go up to Brisbane. Brisbane aren't going to look down that far because Brisbane have got their all their juniors. They've got from there up to wherever they go. You know what I mean? Mm. So it's not just about the Gold Coast Titans. It's about that whole region that we need to protect because there's that many young kids. Imagine being, a, you know, a young a young Koori fella from you know Ballina killing it, and then there's no junior club for Titans. You got nothing to like. What are you going to have to go down to Newcastle to trial for Harold Mats and that? Like, yeah, no they, way. Got, they got their 16s and 18s up here now. Like they got like you know you play 16s and 18 Tweed and Burley. You're in the you know you got something to. Like how we used to play Harrow Mats over here in SG Ball. Mm. So your, your chance of losing that if you don't get it. Mm, 100%. So what do you got planned for after football? A few people have asked or jumped online. That's the one thing that I'm really nervous about. Eh? It's, I've been one of those oh, – I was a horrible kid at school, left end of year 10. What are you like at school? Oh, man, I was just – Are you re- feisty? Are you trying to fight everyone in there? No, no, no. I was not. I was just, just on the footy field? Yeah, just carrying <laughs> on the footy field. Just, but I, just, I was just – just the class clown, pretty much. Like, yeah. Um, like a bit of attention. Oh, just attention seeker, and just carried on, and just it wasn't for me. I just don't have the attention span to sit there and be lectured to. I just don't. How old are you? 10, 14, 15? No, I think if fifteen, sixteen. Yeah, I'm end of, I'm October, so yeah, it's probably fifteen. So I went work me old man. I started making like a thousand bucks a week with this oh, labour job, and the boys were at school. And I was like, because <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the reason I didn't work this because Scott Murray who used to be the Roosters co- coach back in the SG Ball night. Mm. He was the head footy coach, and I just. Like spray this um PE teacher, this chick, like I just give her a hard time. And he comes up to me one day and goes, mate, you're not going to play footy for this matter of high, you know, matter of sports. High. I was like, why? And he goes, because you keep fucking doing this. And I was like, yeah, because she's like, that's my wife. I was like, ah. Oh, that hurts. That hurts. <laughs> so, First lesson yeah, in life. <laughs> and then I already like, and then I remember this, I was just a shit, it's not something to be proud of. I was a shit kid at school and then, they said, we're going to give you a trial for year 11. We're going to give you the first six weeks of year 11. See how you go. Yeah. Anyway, I threw a stick and it's bouncing and hit this girl on the head and she's chasing me around trying to kill me. So I've got expelled. And I remember Mr. Hill at Matter High said, um, when are you going to get a job like stacking shelves at Coles or something? So I go, fuck yourself and got up and walked out. Oh, like, yeah. like I was off him for saying that to me. Like, go get a job at Coles. <laughs> so I was like, it was sort of the first year or two. I was like, I want to save that much money and prove this brick wrong. But um, yeah, back to the question. I don't really know what I'm going to do. Like, I just, I'd like to know. What, what excites you? That's another thing. Someone said, you, I was talking to Mam Ninga the other day. He's like, you, we're doing things of progress. He's like, you got to find something you're passionate about. I was like, fuck, I don't have anything that I'm passionate about. Like, I love my, besides my kids and footy. Like, and I have my hobbies like your golf now, but I'm not really passionate. So, so like, I want to, I don't know, I've got to try and, I'm not going to force myself into something though. Like, I want to find something that I actually care about or want to do. But we've always had a little goal that we want to get like a little cafe going up in the Goldie and that. Sick, like, yeah. But we just, 
I want to be more secure. Did you say a sandwich shop? Well, yeah. That's what we want to do because I'm not going to tell the idea because where I live, they're like, <laughs> mate, this from, from, from the airport. Hey, YKTR sandwiches, uh, eh? YKTR sandwiches. <laughs> sandwiches. But like from a certain section, there's nothing to get out there. It's not like here we can go to the chicken shop or go grab a feed at Hong Ha. Hong Ha. Like, yeah. Oh, I take a Hong Ha up there. Yeah. Holy so fuck. So, so like at 3 o'clock, at 1.30, all the kitchens, all the cafes close their kitchens. So there's nothing. You imagine the trades on the way home at 3.30, they're starving. <laughs> it's like, get a little sandwich shop going. But we want to know what we're doing first with footy because I've got one more year up there and then well, could you go to England or no? I don't want I don't want to, but you've got to keep your I'm just meant like we don't want to start like say a little sandwich shop and then we have to piss off for three years out of state or something mm. like we want to sort of see where our future is first and then we can start figuring out, okay, little well, let's start looking to this and that. So but the more thing I'm scared, I'm just I'm so nervous. Like I don't really know what to do or what I'm what, what I'm gonna do. Like so I'm starting to I always one of those kids go, oh, fuck, I'm twenty four, I swear oh, I'm twenty six. I mean, goes like that, eh? I'm twenty nine, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I like I debuted in two thousand eleven, like it'd be ten years like this. I was like, fuck, this is like I'm getting old, man. Not old, like I but I'm twenty nine in a week's time. Like it's that's I'm on the back four or five years of my career now. Like I'm that end of it. So I never thought I'd get there. So I've got to start pulling my head out and start thinking about ideas and start, you know, like branching out and, and talking to people and that. Mm, exciting Oh yeah. well, I feel like you'll be alright Yeah I'll be alright I'll try and get me time I'd love to stay in footy somehow I don't have a passion For head coaching or anything But I'd love to stay I reckon that'd be The fucking worst job In the yeah, world Yeah I'd love to coach. stay around like just, like just be around the club In some footy capacity Like you know Like a forwards coach Or something <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think everyone's Trying to jake yeah, that gig Because I remember Gordon Towers used to do He's come down Twice a week for see us mm-hmm. Fucking sweating Come out twice a week for South and do like the forwards cage and wrestle and that. It was the best gig. And then he had his Fox Sports stuff and he'd just fly back up that other. You know what I mean? Like, I was like, that's mad because you, you're a part of the boys. Yeah, if you end up, they end up being successful, you or you helped out because you're doing that sort of stuff. So mm. I'm just not too sure. I, don't wanna, yeah, I have no idea what I'm doing. It makes me nervous even talking about it. Yeah. So you, um, fiance, wife started a clothing brand as well. Do you want to yeah. give her a shout out and how yeah. she's going with that? What made her start that? Yeah, Jaded. Um, yeah. um Everyone, do you know what? Do you know what? A good thing about Jade, she's she's like she like obviously she's pretty, but she's easy to watch because she's so naturally funny. She's just herself, you know what I mean? Yeah, so like, I'll find I'll find find both you guys really easy to watch on like camera and stuff and that. And she's built a bit of a following on her own, hasn't she? Yeah, I, I reckon. I love how honest she is, and like having she's like, I look looking after the kids and shit. I, I, fucking I, makes I, me. I, 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 I tell her, like, 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 put you on the map. No, we just we Chris, Chris Judd and his wife have a pair, I can't remember the name, but Jagged, I think it's called. Mm. And they're $160 a pair of tights. Literally, literally $160. Pair of tights. Literally literally $160. And, and she's, she's the only kid king of Wayne Melbourne. They're the dog dogs there, so, so I understand. understand. Mm. But, but like, for a pair of tights, any kind of pair of tights, it's $130, dollars Like, you get a long chain, they're $120. And a lot of these girls can't wear those kind of tights. So, Jay wanted to get tights out there that are all the same material, all the same quality. Like we've, we've, we've gone around a thousand shops, 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 shops,
he got two weeks of surgery. And it was the week after, so like I could start walking without pain. I was like, oh sweet. So me, and, me and Norms went to Darcy Lussick surprise thirtieth, and we mm. were in the city. We're drinking. You were there. We were drinking the white tequila and that, the Asian tequila or Chinese tequila, and I was fucking blind. Fuck, that's strong, eh? Yeah, hey, that oh, shit, eh? Hey. Hammer. So we went to um, went to the club. In the, in the cross And then fucking He was doing something And Jay was there Because all her friends came And it was a man And I Haynes, he was there Anyway And all he's like Pushed me And I was like I sat back in my chair What the fuck are you doing mate And he's like Done it again I don't know if he's being pissed So I just go like, What a mic I just went fucking bang Kick him straight away <laughs> Put one straight in his chin And he's like Fucking yeah yeah So Haynes just came to the front He's like Come to the front So let's go okay. And Jay's like Don't you fucking go out the front I'm like No nah, I'm going So anyway I've got Was Haynes trying to square you up too No Haynes is like Fight 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 oh, And I was like, <laughs> like, oh, man, like Come on bro like, yeah. Come on then and I went, and then yeah, fuck, like, yeah, it started to cancel. Fuck off. And go, turn around, like, big before baby answer. Went, nah, bruh, 1 30 lockout. I went, oh, <laughs> like, everyone, was, yeah, everyone was still inside. He's carrying on still, and then I couldn't get back in, but didn't fight. It was very then, <laughs> then I started getting like, you know, off camera. I, like, fuck, I started spraying. I said, wait, do I see you tomorrow? I'm gonna give it to you. Though. And then I woke up the next day, and he sent me one. I sent him one kind of thing. And the next day, I said, fuck, <laughs> <laughs> it, nah, we're sweet, bro. It's all good. Hasn't Darcy given him a knock on the bus as well? Another one, yeah, we're in Darcy, uh, in um, Seattle, and Normie's carrying on about something, and the next thing you know, he's just in the back seat of the bus, <laughs> and Normie's just out, and Darcy's just sitting there with his kid. Oh, oh, that was a good night. And Normie was telling me he woke up, and like um, he had a fat lip And he just started talking to Darcy And Darcy's like But don't talk to me Yeah Darcy <laughs> And he's like what, what what happened oh. And he goes Oh he goes Oh but Darcy's just chinned you back there. Oh mate Same as a quick one before we go Mitch Allgood Years ago he's like Is he the one that fought um, Mad Eye Yeah he chinned Mad Eye oh. yeah. so he's, a, he's a weapon But he had um. A, he had Can he throw him Assuming so, he's you'd hope so. I wouldn't want to skip him. Yeah, yeah. Fuck. So he had like a car, a, a brace on. He must have done. I think he's done. He's like PCL and MCL. So he's like on Mad Monday walk around, and every time he goes sit down, normally would pull his chair out, and he's like nearly stack it. Like, oh, and then he's that's like, not even he's funny. Like, yeah, he's like, bro, don't fucking do that. Like, I'm gonna kill you. And he's like, no, he's like, yeah, do it again. I'm like, oh my oh. god. Like, I'd have to like pull him aside. I'm like, bro, like. Please don't hit normie like it's you know we're all having a good time. He's like like it's just something you wouldn't do, but like that's just norms. Like once you you learn you learn to know how he is, and he's just the best bloke in the world, and I have a lot of time for him. Yeah, he's grown up heaps since he then. has, man. He's, yeah. a, he's a good fellow. Like he's um a lot different than how he was back in the day. Like he still loves his party and that, but he's um yeah he's, he's I've known we've all matured, man. Like when you're 23 and that together, thinking that like you know then now we're 28, 29. Like oh yeah, like you've you've matured in those. Five you just want to hang around a couple of good blokes and have a beer. Yeah, right? yeah, my old man said you can count your, your best mates in your hand. You Easily, know what I mean? and yeah. I've I've cr- smalled at my, my little crews for a long time now. I've always been friends with a lot of people, but now I just it's not that I'm being a snob. It's just you just you realise who's yeah. been there for you, mm. and when you're injured, it all takes a text message. You know how you going, brother? Or you know, or when you, how's your kids going? That's a big one for me. Like mm. my some of my good mates, how's he, how's the boys? You know, that's all it takes. You know what I mean? And sometimes mm. I talk to my mates like, fuck, when you Jay's like, yeah, I was like, oh, fuck, I forgot to ask about his daughter. Like, but just that's all it takes and little things like that. And when you know, I love Harlem, man. He's my favourite. He's, he's so man. funny, know, man. He's an old soul and a little body, man. So <laughs> I've been favouring him lately too. Jay's like, what are you doing? Uh, Come here, like, give me a kiss. So, you know. <laughs> all right, bud. Thanks for all jumping right, on. For um, five, welcome back anytime. We'll look, do, look, look, look for doing. Look for. <laughs> look forward to the box with you. <laughs> Two weeks, man. How good. Uh, all right, bud. Later. Bro.